Hey everybody, welcome to uh, another Git tutorial. Today I'm going to briefly talk about Git Stash, which is a pretty cool mechanism that um, that Git has that lets you, it's in the name, stash your work uh, temporarily. So uh, let's uh, get right into it. Um, this, I'm in... Uh, I'm in this trick repo. If you've watched some of the other videos, you may be familiar with it. Um, it's just from GitHub. Um, oops, Git Remote Show Origin will show me the URL. So if you want to follow along, feel free to clone this and uh, um, check it out and mess with it all you want. So uh, let me just show you right now that we're working in a clean repo. I have some commits. I'm, I'm three commits ahead of Origin Master. Um, mainly made those uh, doing some of these educational videos. But the focus of this video is to show you how you can use Git Stash uh, to really help your development flow. So what we're going to first do here is create some changes. Um, so I just went into a source directory and there's some source files in here and we're just going to do a couple different things just to to get you know what I like to call a a dirty working tree meaning uh, we have changes in our working area so I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to add some lines you know of course if you were doing real work so I'm going to write the file. It wouldn't look like this, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So now, of course, if I do get status, we'll see that change. So we're going to add another change just to show you instead of one file, because, um, you know, you can make modifications, you can add files, you can delete files. So we're going to do all of those things. And so let's just uh, say we're going to make a new file that's similar to this one. We'll call it RefFoo. Um, so I created a new file. If I do get status now, you'll see it as an untracked file. So let's go ahead and get add this file so that Git knows about it. Um, and let's go ahead and so if I do get status now, we'll see the new file's been added to the index. My changes here have not. Let's do one more example where we actually delete a file. Um, so we're going to do a git rm here, which is basically just telling git to remove the file. And let's just pick one. Um, say ref parser. I have no idea what these files actually do. Um, so we'll see git says it, it did an rm. And I haven't really gone over git rm that much. It's, it's really just a wrapper around the normal rm command in linux and it's just it's removing the file but it's also telling it's telling git to remove it so and when you do it explicitly like that it's better because sometimes git can auto detect a file went away but if you start renaming files it can get confused so it's really best to use git rm if you want to actually delete something from the working tree and just to be clear that that won't remove it from the history of the repo. That, that's simply saying that I no longer want this file from this point forward. So make sure you don't confuse that. Uh, Git, since it tracks all the history of all time, you can always get back to the state before this file was deleted. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit of an aside. So let's go ahead and add this change to the index with the git add-u shortcut. And now if we do git status, we'll see we got three different changes. We modified a file, we got a new file, we deleted a file. Now let's say that in our hypothetical situation we get a call from our boss and he says that I know we're in the middle of this work but we need to drop everything and track down an issue in the latest state of Origin Master. And so you might, well, if you're new to Git you might think, oh well how am I going to do that? I guess I gotta go clone another repo so I don't lose this work. Um, I could commit this work, but if it's in progress, I don't really want to create a commit at a state that isn't complete, if that makes sense. And if you're new to Git, that's really not that big of a deal. 
you can feel free to create commits at incomplete states. Just be verbose in your commit messages that the state is incomplete. And that's sort of an aside. But in this case, we're going to, we're going to show you how to, to handle this situation with the nifty git stash. So git stash, um, you can, you can give it no commands and it'll, it's one of those git shortcuts and it'll create the stash and give it a name that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So when I teach people git stash, I basically tell them to do git stash save and then in single quotes, write a message that makes sense to you if you were to look at it several weeks from now. So in this case, I'll just make something up like in the middle of memory manager changes for optimizing some stuff. Can't spell. Okay. When you hit enter, the stash will be created. And it says, <clears throat> save working directory in index state. Um, this is the message we just gave it. And it says, our head is now at this SHA-1, which is the commit that is our head commit. And now if we do get status, we'll see that, hey, all those changes are gone. It's back to the master branch with no changes, which is awesome. So you can have as many stashes as you want. A stash is, you can think of a stash under the hood as a commit that is purely local to this repo. Meaning you can't, you can't really turn a stash. I mean, you can turn a stash into a commit that, that's sort of more advanced, but you can think of it as a save state that you store locally in your repo. You can't really push it around. People can't pull it. Um, so it, it's useful for things that are, you know, you need to set aside temporarily or you have some debug prints that you want to hang on to for a little bit, but aren't really permanent. Um, and so you can always look at any stash that you have in your repo by doing git stash list. And what you'll get is a stack here. We only have one, but it'll show you all your stashes and right next to it is the description you wrote. So if you ever want to get back to the state, of the stash, you can do git stash apply and then just give it this funky notation, which you can think of sort of as the stash SHA-1 kind of shortcut. You do git stash apply and what do you know? We have our changes back. And so you'll notice here that um, git has automatically put the new file in the index. That's just sort of one of those weird things that Git does assumptions based on whether a file was new or modified or deleted, what have you. So um, basically th this is just a quick um, introduction to how to use Stash. Um, and it's super useful for things like debug prints, um, things you need to save off temporarily. If you need to drop everything that you're in the middle of progress with and check out to another state, now that that's what's really cool. So Let's just do a git stash with no arguments. And now we do git status. You'll see that we have a clean working directory. And if I do git stash now list, you'll see that it created a new stash and it gave it a name that really doesn't make much sense. It just shows us what the commit head was. So that's why I like to do git stash save instead of this um, there's a git stash with no arguments. It's a quick way to stash everything, but later when you go to look at it in a few days, you're like, oh, what was I working on here? I, I don't really remember. So anyway, both techniques work. I really recommend the git stash save um, technique. But now that we have a working directory that's clean, we can perform operations that we wouldn't normally be able to do, like check out to a new SHA-1 commit. You know, if you were to try to check out to a state with these changes, it would pro, you know, if there were changes in there, it would say, hey, you can't check out because you have these modifications. You need to either stash or commit them. Um, so this might be a, a cool little opportunity to show you something that might not be completely obvious to new Git users about this message. So if you recall, our origin remote is pointing at GitHub. And we made three commits, and right here it's saying that we are ahead of Origin Master by three commits. And that, that makes sense. But since those commits were made several days ago, there's been more work happening on Origin Master. So you might think, well, why are we only ahead by three commits? What happened to the other commits? 
that have been happening over the last few days in GitHub, um, since you know we we've let this repo sit for a few days, you might be wondering, you know, why isn't this updating? And and the reason is because Git status is completely local. It is showing you the status of your repo. When you do a Git status, it does not require an internet connection. It does not go out and check the remote. So when when you see these messages, these are messages that reflect the current state of your local repo. Now, if you want to get the latest from Origin, like as a, a good way to say that is, if I were to check out the Origin Master right now, I would get Origin Master at the last time I did a fetch, which was over a week ago. And I can show you right now, if I do a git fetch, and now, okay, so it saw some changes from the remote coming in on Origin Master. If I do git status now, check this out. Here's the message we got. Your branch and Origin Master have diverged. You have three and 14 different commits each respectively. Okay, so that, that makes sense, right? Before, before we did the fetch, it, it knew about the three commits we made. And then we did a fetch. We brought in over a week's worth of information from the development happening at the GitHub remote. And it said, hey, 14 commits have happened since then. So right here in Git status, it shows you that you've diverged. Um, and if we do a git pull, we'll actually do the merge. And I won't get into that because this video is more about stash. But I just wanted to show you that, that that's a pretty good um, opportunity to talk about. You know, when you use stash, it's often because you need to drop what you're doing, grab the latest, and do an investigation of some kind. And so in this case, we, we stashed everything we were doing. We fetched the latest. And now if we need to, we can git checkout to origin master. And if we look at the git log, we have the latest commit uh, as of August 5th, which happened in the master branch. So um, that's pretty much it that I just want to show for this video. I had a little sidetrack there about git status, but I think that's a little important tidbit. So anyway, uh, just to quickly go over what we talked about git stash save your message goes here and then git stash list will show you what stashes you have um, so I hope you found this video helpful I'm Dan and I'll see you next time